Hello YouTube, it has been a minute, but um, here I am, it's Joey, Daily Vinyl, there I am, got a nice new wooden sign, thanks to my buddy, Carved With Light, uh, Nick, he's very awesome, he does great work, look him up on Etsy, anyhow, uh, I have not done an album review uh, in, in a little bit, and um, I want to talk to you about Nick Mulvey, if you follow the title here, that's why you're listening, so um, Nick Mulvey is somebody that came to me through another musician by the name of Ben Howard, who shared uh, Fever to the Form off the first record right there, First Mind, um, and well, it immediately clicked when I heard that, but I did not, um, I guess, stick with it for very long. It was not until a couple of weeks ago, well, I, I should say a couple of months ago, uh, Amazon had a listing for Wake Up Now uh, on a very reasonable price for LP, and out of curiosity, I first went to one of my favorite streaming platforms, Spotify, and played the track Mountain to Move, which actually has the title, uh, Wake Up Now, to the second LP here, in it, uh, lyrically speaking, it's a hook, and I was blown away, uh, and I have not been able to put this LP away, um, it's very worn out already, um, and I've also been playing it in streaming circles, and in my car, and in my truck, I mean, uh, just out to the point where my kids know the lyrics now uh it is a very good record and i think i would be remiss not to share it with my fan base here um to give nick the credit he deserves and well to just shine a little light on this record that while two years old still feels extremely new to me uh and offers a lot um a lot in the space of music so if you're a fan of ben howard if you like things like john butler trio even um Banana Pancakes, Jack Johnson, uh, this is going to work for you. Um, what I would say is it's somewhere like the aesthetic that Vance Joy offers through his music with the mind of somebody like John Butler, but presented on a stage like Ben Howard. So that's kind of like the trifecta of listening. Uh, I, would, I would suggest if you like all three of those and this is right up your alley, if those are not uh, complimentary to your ears, then this may not work for you. Very, very humbled record. Uh, I am so fortunate to have found this. I, I want to talk about the opening track. It's called Unconditional. Um, unconditional love, unconditional statements, unconditional being. He really, really makes a point to open the record with this in a way that he's been soul searching to put this album out. And I think having had a son and, and being married and, and also refinding, a, I think, a love for himself in the world. Uh, in a sort of a metaphorical way of overcoming your own, uh, I guess, like momentum that you have to slow down sometimes. Uh, he has an unconditional love for the world and, and just uh, a number of things. And I think it's a very, very rich way to start the album. Um, an excellent bass presence for a guy who's really uh, known for his light string work. Um, th this has, uh, and I mean, as far as like, arpeggiating chords and things. The the bass is really predominant uh, right from the get-go here, and it carries the song. So there's this sort of juxtaposition between somber and then like dancey and nice. Uh, and it's this world presence, his his time in Portico Quartet, uh, being a student of music from, from Cuba, I believe. Uh, it really shines through uh, in all of his music, uh, very world-friendly, very tribal rhythms, um, but it does not take away from it. It's actually more almost like a natural feeling that I get as, as a human, as, as a being, where I cannot resist these sort of melodies. It kind of takes me out of things. It kind of reminds me of something like Animal Collective or Earthly Fire in that space where they, they had about 10 years ago, they were doing a lot of that stuff. But a look at some of this art here, and you can sort of see the foundations of what I'm talking about, kind of, kind of coming through. Sort of this, like, almost you want to say, okay, how much... Um, mushrooms did you eat <laughs> but not really it, it's 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 just um it's nice it's it's lovely uh I, I cannot get enough of this record uh track two is called transform your game and i think that in so many ways that's kind of what he did he sort of took his sort of uh singer songwriter approach that was very um self-driven uh lyrical messages that he was dealing with and he sort of re-encompassed that into a a larger scope. Uh, the only way I can analogize that, if that's a word, is this is a psychologist's record and Wake Up Now is a sociologist's record. And for me that works. As a student of both, I had a, 
associate's degree in psychology and a bachelor's degree in sociology, so I kind of see the parallels here. I've, I've done enough thinking of myself uh, in these regards that I find it very similar. Nick and I are very close in age. Uh, lyrically speaking, this album speaks to me, and I think if you're the kind of person who battles with spirituality and like religion and these sort of themes, but you definitely feel like a kindred connection to the earth and the people around you and you feel karma is real and energy and those things, then this album is going to speak volumes to you. Um, musically speaking, a lot of repetition in the right places. So not for the sake of um, pounding lyrics in your head or just having a hook to use a hook, but done in a really wise way. Uh, there's very complimentary backing female vocals that kind of carry through a lot of the songs, um, often being used in a round. And while he doesn't usually have three parts going, which is, I guess, more traditional for a round, which is someone singing the part and then another person sings the same part and another person sings the same part, and they sort of slowly catch up with each other, um, it's just two. There is layers to each of those two parts as well. So it's sort of harmonized in a really beautiful way. His richer vocal mass against the female lighter vocal. It's really nice. Uh, Imogen, uh, it ain't over now. That's one of the bigger lyrics on there. He sort of talks about this statement that even though the world has its issues and there are things that um, you and I maybe feel apathetic about, uh, you don't have to stop. You don't have to give up. You can, you can persevere. We can persevere as um, individuals. And as long as we come over that gap together, even if we only do it as one person, we can slowly make a difference. At least that's sort of the heartfelt message I take away. Um, Maela, moving forward to track number four. Maela is a name that reiterates throughout the album. In my head, it's almost like what he's calling Mother Earth. It's his nickname for her. I could be completely wrong. Um, it could be something else. This track specifically to me rings true of uh, immigrant issues and people trying to flee their countries and go somewhere else. Uh, I live in Arizona, the border of Mexico. This is a super, super topical thing for me here at home. Um, and I love and embrace Mexican culture in every way, shape, or form, and some of the hardest working, best people I know, I have no problem with them coming here. Uh, and I don't think that just because you were born somewhere gives you any sort of connective reasoning to say, oh, I deserve to be here more than somebody else. Um, and while I super agree with being able to come in under the right pretenses, you know, following the law, I also don't think that you should... Um, push out your neighbor under any means. So the, the lyric here being, I am your neighbor, and he reiterates that through the end of the song, it's just sort of a social statement on, we're all neighbors. We, we should take care of each other. The way you would give your neighbor a cup of coffee or, or let them borrow some milk, uh, you should treat your neighbors in another country the exact same way with the same regard. And I think that's beautiful. Um, and he kind of picks it from there in a track called We Are Never Apart. I think this is more of a, a life and death kind of statement on uh, even though when you die you're still together there's a spiritual connection between people um, it kind of has these melodies that remind me of Jack Johnson more so in I think it's a, a mandolin being played um, at the beginning uh, but it, it's it's really nice um, again more political reach but not in a way that feels abrasive or in your face we're not talking rage against the machine political it's more of a spiritual thing. Um, and that's good because especially at my age now, I don't really have the angst I did when I like Rage, <laughs> even though their music is still very good, but it, it sort of transcends into this, I guess, middle-aged version of that. Um, number six is Remembering. Uh, it's a song where he's talking about his father in the beginning. It continues this sort of thematic uh, look at life after death as a you know, as a big picture kind of thing. Uh, I'm very, very much so reminded of Dia de los Muertos and the Disney movie Coco and the sort of like afterlife presence and how we can connect with that by remembering our ancestors. Um, and I think he takes it to like, again, another higher place. He talks about how he's an energy, he's infinitely such, um, and sort of carrying that through himself. Um, I think you can embrace such concepts if you feel the presence of maybe a past relative uh, around you at times. Uh, I lost both of my in-laws, and I know that feeling all too well. Um, coming to me in my sleep or looking over my shoulder when I was changing my, my daughter's diaper several years ago, it's just this sort of connective energy that I think 
is regarded here. Um, and you can hear it in the music. I mean, there's a strong usage of strings that has a sort of ethereal feeling. And I think it was done with a lot of intent to sort of bridge that gap to make you say, okay, while I'm having this sort of in-depth conversation in my head about these higher ideas, the music is also transcending uh, into this sort of same thing. So I think it's very well thought out. Um, moves into Mountain to Move, which again is the song that brought me to this record. Such a good place for me, um, and I think many of us here in America who live in this on-demand, go, 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 real-time society, everything is a click away, we get caught up in it. Um, and that's like the opening lyric, he says, caught up in specialness. Um, I wish you could see that this world is unraveling. Um, and he's, he's basically saying like how we need to slow down, um, the, the mountain to move is not necessarily what we're trying to gain, but it is, it's overcoming that uh, at the same time. So being that I am of a, a very uh, consumerist person, I, I collect things in abundance, especially records, um, I get it. Uh, I, I, I work two businesses. I have a job. I, I am a double-time student. I, I never stop. I go, go, go. And I think that's sort of this place that Nick was at trying to write this record and he's sort of acknowledging like, hey, we need to slow down and move the mountain that is within us. And when we can overcome that, sort of step back and take a look deeper inside, we can find it. Um, and if any of you have watched a lot of my reviews in the past, I usually don't spend as much time on the lyrics, but I think the lyrics and the message being driven through this album are so I guess relevant for me as a listener and I think us as a social network, not just, uh, you know, Europeans or Americans or Canadians, but like globally, uh, that it's something that people really should hear because I think embracing that is a beautiful thing. Um, you know, it, he moves on to a track called In Your Hands. There's this newly added feature of piano. If you've ever listened to Bing and Ruth, which is like a instrumental piano uh, player, it's so good. Um, it really reminds me of that. It's a complimentary uh, piano part that really embraces these guitar riffs he puts together, which um, if you look here on YouTube, Nick, uh, Nick Mulvey, the singer we're talking about, he actually does a couple of these educational classes where he teaches you how to play his parts. Uh, he's got very um, nice way of doing it. He teaches you how to play the stripped down version and then he teaches you like step two to embracing it a little bit more technical all the way into the way he actually plays it. He starts stretching his fingers and doing all these crazy things. Very good guitar player. Um, uh, seek it out if, if, if you want to learn. Um, but I think it's cool that he's connecting with his audience in such a way and sort of giving back onto that to let like the listener become part of the music, whether you know you have a uh, novice ability or, or an expert ability. Um, and I think in the same way that that is there, the song is called In Your Hands, which has a much bigger, deeper meaning. But, you know, being able to put the music in your hands is like a metaphor for itself. I mean, it all comes full circle. Um, and it's a love song. And I think In Your Hands can really be taken in a lot of ways. It's love for yourself, love for, you know, your significant other, love for everyone as a social tool, love for nature, love for yourself and like a deity. Just so many different layers here. Um, and again, I think it's it's a richness, a specialness that I kind of was longing for in my life uh, as, as somebody who doesn't do religion, but kind of feels certain things at times. I think this album speaks volumes to that. Um, and emotionally so. He hits a note, he says, calling out. He does it very loud, embracing, and repeats it a few times. Uh, and, and that's kind of like the high note for me. It's chills, chills factors. I mean, lyrically speaking, it couldn't get any better. Uh, vocal delivery is so, so spectacular throughout this record and done with, with the sophistication and eloquence to say, I don't have to overdrive it all the time, but in those moments of necessity, I can really reach in and pull it out. And I think that's one of the greatest things uh, a musician can do is to recognize the subtleties of being able to be reserved and then also know when to use those stronger tools. Um, ultimately, it's just full of rich melody. Being able to complement strong different melodies together and build a harmony um, is something that I think is done really well by the great musicians, uh, the better artists of our times, uh, Radiohead, The Cure, even uh, certain stages of the Beatles. They're known for this, um, more or less Modern music, you can find it, but it's not always done well. Um, 
and even more so, I think music just continues to get stripped down and stripped back to basics in a way that almost takes away some of that. Not because people can't do it, but almost like I feel like they don't think artists um, are respected enough or that listeners aren't looking for that. And for me, um, the richer it gets, the more technical um, it's done, the better. Um, I, I, as a musician, aspire to hear these things. Um, but there's also this sort of like simplicity happening there. So being able to to take technicality to a simplistic level and then deliver it in such a, a just accessible way that any audience anywhere in the world can go, I hear something in there I like, is to me um, fantastic. I mean, you could take this music, I think, to any place in the world and whether they don't understand English or not, the sort of rhythmic elements of the music would, uh, you know, it, it would speak to people. So overall, I really just kind of want to leave you with that. If, if you can, if you've never listened to Nick Mulvey, check out First Mind, then definitely listen to Wake Up Now. I actually think as a sophomore record, it is a huge step up. I love this thing. I've probably listened to it 300 times in the last two months. There's a complimentary EP that came out not too long after called Dancing for the Answers. Sort of integrates a little bit of electronic medium um, in a way that almost is not very for for forward it's almost like a step back with the way these kind of rough synthesizers are added sort of this sort of sort of jammy doorsy moments on this track give it to Kali um, and then he also gave us a gift early this year and that was a YouTube cover of the track moment of surrender nails it um, took a song that by you too I don't think got a lot of play or notice for many people and just made it this hugely wonderful easy to embrace track that I think should in the way um, Bob Dylan gave All Along the Watchtower to Jimi Hendrix as his song. I think Moment of Surrender is now Nick Mulvey's. Sorry, Bono. Just get over it. But anyways, that's 20 minutes on Nick. I, I think that's more than enough. Although um, I could probably talk about it for another hour. I, I, I hope that you'll seek it out. You'll give it a listen. I'll put a link below so you can stream it immediately if you want to. Um, and you know what? If you are checking it out just now or you've been a fan for a while... Uh, let me know your thoughts. I would love to engage in some conversation about this album, especially as um, I don't know too many people who, who listen to it. So uh, I'm trying to sort of bridge that gap and, and create a larger fan base and just sort of share in the wealth that is uh, the, the beauty of his music. So I hope you enjoy this sort of like look at it from a musical perspective of the listener. Um, and uh, I look forward to talking with you in the comments. Thanks for your time. Take care.